As a new day dawns, this centuries-old town stirs as the call of Pateros rings throughout the archipelago. Pateros! It is a call rejoicing in its past, a recognition of its presence today, and a battle cry toward progress. In the middle of an urban jungle, Pateros possesses a rural heart. As the only municipality in Metro Manila, Patera stands out amongst its neighbors, with its centuries-old industries that walk alongside its blossoming future. If you are in search of a different face from the metropolitan capital, then join me as I head to Pateros, a town with a provincial soul you can't find anywhere else in Manila. The growth of Pateros walked hand in hand with the rivers which overflowed on its banks. It was this very river that founded Pateros, and it is here where its story begins. Encircling this inland island is the Pateros River, the lifeblood of the town. With winding streets and bridges at every entrance, Pateros had always followed the way of the river. An old settlement for man and duck alike, its ancient inhabitants began its love affair with nature centuries ago. It began as a small village that grew as more and more settlers were drawn to the promise of these fertile lands. By 1700, it was turned into a municipality. For the people of Pateros, the river springs of poetry, turning Pateros into one of the most progressive towns in the region. The rivers provided not only irrigation for their fields, but also transportation and duck raising. It is even said that the national hero, José Rizal, frequented these rivers, describing the duck pens he saw as he cruised southbound from Manila, through Laguna Lake, to his birthplace in Calamba, Laguna. Along fertile banks of the Pateros River, Pato, Spanish for duck, once roamed. The ducks were an important commodity in Pateros throughout the Spanish era, as the town was the primary supplier of duck and duck eggs to Manila. But there was more to it than just duck meat, feathers and eggs. During the Spanish era, duck eggs were essential to the construction of buildings. The egg white was an essential ingredient to strengthen cement, playing a vital role in building many of the Spanish churches. It was from the duck raising industry that the town finally acquired its name. The Spanish called the town Pateros, born from the word pato and generations of duck raisers that resided there. Though duck raising is no longer the town's primary industry, duck eggs and duck cuisine are still popular delicacies. No dish seems more synonymous to Pateros than the balot. In China, it's called Maudan. In Vietnam, it's Trung Vit Lon. But here in the Philippines, it's simply known as balut. Balot is boiled duck egg with a partly developed embryo inside, and it is the Pateros delicacy. Widely regarded as an exotic dish, for the people of Pateros, it is their claim to fame. Traditionally, balot is kept in these deep baskets called garong for incubation. More than a hundred eggs are kept and left to mature in each garong. These eggs are dated and moved from one garong to another for each corresponding day from the day they were laid. The eggs are kept warm for incubation by smothering them with rice husks. The Concha Food Corporation compound is one of the handful of places where this famous delicacy is produced. Andoy Concha, known for his Andoy's best bottled balot, has been producing balot since 1977 and knows the value of these ovoid gems. To satisfy my curiosity, he walked me through the balot process. What we do here is we simulate hatching. What is transferred to the egg, it is the heat of the body. So that is what is simulated in the incubator. To ensure that the temperature remains within limits, the incubator stays within the comfortable 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. After 11 days, we'll have to pull it out and then we'll sort it. We'll remove the dead ones and we'll get the alive uh, embryo and put it back again to the incubator. After 11 days, we will candle them. Silaw. Sisilawin natin dito. On the 11th day, madilim na siya, no? You can see the, the veins, the arteries, yes. and you see a small embryo. Yung hindi kanto itsura yung hindi buhay, ang tawag doon, penoy. Penoy is an unfertilized balot. Like the balot, 
It is boiled, and the result is a tastier version of hard-boiled chicken egg. At 18 days, the bolot embryo is said to be of the ideal size. It is boiled and served and is the favorite of many, as the chick is said to be tender and wrapped neatly inside its albumen, and so hidden from the queasy eye. Moving on, Andoy shares with me the other products made from duck eggs. There are many product lines. You incubate your duck eggs, and production run is balut. Or you use your duck eggs and make salted eggs. Ito yung maalat. In an adjoining room, Andoy produces another popular delicacy, the salted egg. Where there is balot being made, there is probably salted egg as well. Salted egg here is made from fresh, unfertilized duck eggs, which are preserved in a curing process called aptly the pateros method. Unlike that of the Chinese cuisine where ducks and duck eggs are cured in brine, pateros makes theirs from a solution of brine and clay. The eggs are treated for about 18 days, enough time for them to completely absorb the flavor. The Botero salted egg is considered one of the best due to the oily quality of its egg yolk. Like the balot and the penoy, the salted eggs are boiled. To distinguish it from balot or penoy, salted egg is coated in red dye. But however way you have them, all are popular favorites at dinner tables and street food counters throughout the country. The success of these traditional methods has lasted for centuries and replicated to perfection. From incubation to preservation, the balot and salted egg making technology has gone through some slight innovations in recent years. One such innovation was in candling. Part of the process is checking if the eggs are fresh and they do this by putting the eggs over some light. Silo or candling is an important process in determining the quality of the eggs. But since Andoy produces roughly about 15,000 eggs per day, candling one egg at a time may take too long. So he improvised by creating this makeshift light table. The methods might have changed, but the science is the same as it had been since balot production started here. And the taste, they say, only got better. After an enlightening conversation, I mustered the courage to do something I had never done, to finally try the balot myself. Hiding my nerves, I cheated a little by eating it dipped in spicy red tomato sauce. But if eating boiled duck egg isn't thrilling enough for you, then the abnoy may prove to be the challenge your palate is looking for. Abnoy is the penoy past its prime, or simply rotten duck egg. Well, abnoy is when you see it, it's it's now it's mabantu talaga babaho. It's penoy, naging spoiled. Some people like durian and some people hate durian. Dito mas atin, some people will not eat it because it smells bad than durian. In other words, when we bake that and make it like rice cake and we put kamati uh, sibuyas with kimchi and then ang ibibake mo siya tapos siya sausawin na sukat bawang. Characteristic of this dish is its awful, pungent smell, contrasted by its deep, delectable flavor. Cooked much like Mexican scrambled eggs, it is served on banana leaves and dipped in coconut vinegar. In the afternoon, vendors bring out trays of this delicacy, giving me an opportunity to sample them. To my utter surprise, I really quite enjoyed it.